Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Welcome to another one of these Orchid Progress updates where we look at a set of orchids. This is set three and it's part two because there were too many to fit into one video basically. So um, these were the orchids that were worked on in May and we're, we're working on a sort of three month rolling basis. So those that were worked on in June I will film at the end of September, etc. Till we run out of things that I've worked on. <laughs> Obviously the working on orchids tails off as the season progresses, so uh, that we will run out eventually. Anyway, um, these are seemingly quite popular. So I think it stems on from getting requests for how an, an individual orchid works, um, you know, after, an, uh, after a work's been done, how does it progress? And it probably stems from people's interest in an individual orchid because they've got one or are planning on getting one. Maybe. I mean, I'm guessing, obviously. <laughs> um, but again, some are more popular than others. But um, anyway, this batch is a mixed bunch. And in amongst it, we have two that might not actually make it. Um, the last batch, part one, and, you know, they're going to be fine. <laughs> but there's a couple in here that might not. So they've been struggling for a long time now, certainly one of them. Anyway, these are numbers 8, 9 and 10 out of the 10 that I chose that were done in May. <laughs> Unfortunately, because I'm doing them in date order by date, there are two... <laughs> three number eights and two number tens. There's actually six plants to look at. And I will do them in order as, as we did last time. I've got my list. Right, so we will start off with the first of number eights. The number eights. As I said, there are three. So these were all done on the 24th of May. So if you wanted to go and find the video where these three were worked on, might be two separate videos, not sure, don't remember that far back, but you can search back through my videos looking at the dates. Um, that's why I'm giving you the dates. Now this is Dendrobium Lindleyi, was failing miserably on a mount, so we thought we'll try it in a pot with the let's make some roots mix. So this went in the small bark, perlite and sphagnum moss. Um, the idea being it should generate some roots. Now there are places in this pot that you can't see the roots but there are some around the outside that you can see. So where these roots are is where a new growth is progressing. This little new growth here yeah, hasn't even produced a leaf yet so it's a relatively new new growth if you see what I mean. Um, but this was failing miserably on the mount um, it has grown and matured some new growths already. Um, these leaves that look a paler colour are on the end of new growths. Yeah, So it, it's coming back. It's coming back. I won't say that's made it yet. And um, as long as these new growths actually produce some roots and mature, by the end of the growing season, which on this plant they may well do because they're quite fast growers, Dendrobium lindleyi. Once the new growths actually start, you know, they, they grow, produce quite a fat cane and a new leaf relatively quickly compared with some. So, yeah, it's coming back. I haven't lost it. As long as we've got things like this going on, then, you know, it's going to make it. So that's that one. Right, now we'll have a look at some that probably aren't going to make it. <laughs> or if they do, I'll be surprised, let's put it that way. Right, so the first one that may not make it is, uh, if it's going to come out of the black pot, uh, it's, it's not worth getting out of the black pot. I'm not even sure I'm even going to put this back on the shelf. Um, this is BC Make, -A. it's called something else now, it's a Brasso Anthe. Um, rather than a Brassocatlia, which is what it used to be. And it's done nothing in the way of roots. It's still wobbling in the pot. I, I put it in a mix that hopefully could generate some roots, 
but I didn't want to sink it in that media because it's a cattleya type at the end of the day. It shouldn't stay wet. But when, it's tr when you're trying to recover a plant, you have to override the thoughts about how to look after a cattleya type, which is nice, fast, wet, dry cycle, yeah? Well, when you're recovering a plant, that has to go out the window. You need to keep it moist. And it has grown a pathetic little new growth. I think that's a new growth. But I'm going to tip that out of the pot now and put it back in lower down with some media nearer the top. It's not growing as it is. So, you know, do something about it. I don't think it's going to make it, quite honestly. This got hit very bad by scale. And the Bois de Val scale that, um, that I've got, well, had, I don't think it's much of it around now, um, does actually leave toxins in the plant. And some plants are quite sensitive to those toxins. They get in the plant and they just stop growth. The plant's effectively dead, it just doesn't know it yet. Um, and this may be one of those, but it's certainly not growing. That's that one. <clears throat> and the other one that's in the similar category is, uh, is this one, which is a shame. I bought this because I liked it so much and it just didn't grow. Again, it was mounted and it just didn't grow on its mount. And this is a Rancavola David Sanders. And I put it in the pot with the let's get some roots going media. And this one is starting to grow. We do have, there's a tiny little new growth there. And then round this side, there's one coming up the middle that's pushing on and another tiny little one there. But there's no sign of new roots. And several of the, um, I mean, this, several of the older bits are just dying. They're falling off. So part of the plant is still dying, but in one place on the plant, it is successfully starting some new growths. Now, whether they're going to push on and get up to maturity or not, I don't know. But if they don't produce roots, they are doomed to fail. Yeah? So they will drain the last bit of life out of this plant unless they can get some roots going to replenish the stocks, if you see what I mean. So that's the state that this is in at the moment. It may well still fail. We shall see. Right, so those that were the three that were done on, what did I say, the 24th? Right, number nine. This is INSI, INSI being naughty. So this, this was one on its own. And this is um, Miltonia flavescens, the revenge. <laughs> now, the two new growths on here, the one at the back is not going to grow. I don't think that's going to push on that little thing there. Um, label out of the way so you can see it. I don't think that's going to grow, quite honestly. But the two new growths at the front of the plant, if they attempt to bloom, I'll stop them. But I think they are mature now so it's gone past the point where the spikes would form um, which is good because I want this to produce roots now at the moment those two leading bulbs which are nice sized bulbs they're bigger than the one behind so they've grown on nicely since I got it matured their top two leaves but what they haven't done is produce a wealth of roots but there are some just a few roots that have come out of there so, um, yeah, no pot full of roots yet. We shall see. I did notice, the reason I got rid of my original one, which I had for quite a long time, was it would not bloom. I just couldn't get it to bloom. Now, this came from Burnham's. Guess what? All the ones in Burnham's are in bloom now. They're selling them in their orchids in bloom section. <laughs> So they do bloom. I shall have to nail Arthur to the bench until he reveals the secret. But there is no secret. Not really. If you look at where Burnham's keep their Miltonia flavescens and you look at the whole of that nursery section, you sort of think, there's nothing special going on here. There's not like a special bit of extra shading or a hole in the shading just for this it's just, they're just in that general part of the nursery. 
So why my previous one wouldn't bloom, I really don't know. What I also can't remember, because it's too long ago now, was did my original one that wouldn't bloom actually come from Burnham stock? Maybe not. This one does come from Burnham stock and the Burnham's versions of this bloom. So maybe next year we'll see the blooms on this. Maybe. Anyway, yeah, that got put in the let's grow some roots. Same as the uh, everything else that I, hasn't got roots. And um, so far it hasn't done it. But we have fat, plump bulbs. So somehow or other this is getting nutrition. Uh, it must be just getting it off the few old roots that went down in that pot. Anyway, I believe it will do well in the future, not just yet. So that was number nine. Number nine was done, if I can find it, on the 27th. So we've nearly run out of May now. <laughs> right, and the two number tens, the last two, they were done on the 29th of May. Yeah? And these look very similar. So... Uh, they were both done for the same reason. They're both dendrobiums, they were both on mounts and they were both failing miserably and I was not prepared to lose them. Um, this one, for instance, is Dendrobium primulinum variety laos. I suspect that would be impossible to ever get again unless I could find somebody that I knew that was prepared to divide one. Um, this came from the guy that comes from Taiwan to Malvern, yeah? And this is the only one I've ever seen for sale <laughs> from that guy. So chances of getting it again, well, I suppose I could get another one from him if he brought one. But anyway, um, since this was put in a pot, it's growing. So it looks like all it needed was a more constant hydration. Because obviously with the mounts, with their small amount of moss and everything, they get a wet dry cycle. Well, when things are trying to grow, that's not always the best way to look after them. Unless you want to water twice a day. And I don't even want to water every day, let alone twice a day. So since it's gone in its pot, it's growing. Now some of the new growths are coming out quite a long way up the cane and would be classed as a keiki. I don't care, it's growing. There's another one here on the side of the pot. And quite honestly, if you look at these two nice growths, they're both kikis, and the bottom one, the larger one, is actually producing roots now. But there are some growths coming out near the base of the plant. They're the more important ones because they're the ones that will get roots down into the media, which can then help supply energy into the plant. So these are quite important. They're growing on quite nicely. So all in all, including the kikis, we've got one, two, tiny one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine new growths, whereas there was nothing. The new growths that had come on it before just failed. It just rotted off. So it's growing. I think it is gonna make it, but it does need a new root system, which it hasn't got yet. And there is nowhere near enough normal time left in this season for those canes to mature. So I doubt if we'll see blooms next year. Highly unlikely. There's no energy left in this. The older canes have just lost all their strength, if they ever had any. And it's up to those new canes to grow on. If we do the lights in the autumn to extend the growing season, that's the type of thing that needs to extend the growing season to get those canes as large as possible before they shut down. And that will put the most energy into the plant that I can do for this year. So that's that one. And then the other one that was done for exactly the same reason, again, might be difficult to get again, although Spicesotics do have these. I think this is where it came from. And this is Dendrobium harveyanum. And this is growing nicely now. This was failing, new growths were just failing on it. The original canes had shriveled quite badly. Um, but we do have some signs of roots in the pot on this one. Not much, but any, any sign of root growth means it's there. It's not all gonna be on the edge of the pot, is it? 
So the fact that a bit has reached the edge of the pot, there's more than that in there. And the new canes on this one are pushing on very well. So these are more advanced than on the Primulinum. There's not as many, but they are all coming from the base of the plant. Yeah. So every one of these is going to produce some roots. And again, this will be a candidate for the lights to get those canes as large as possible and keep them growing as long as possible. They're actively growing at the moment, so they, you know, um, but you can get some types of dendrobiums if they're in a very, very weak state. You might see some new growths, but they won't mature properly. They'll be like less than half normal size and they'll finish growing. But they provide the basis for good stuff the following year. So sometimes it's a two year cycle to get the full recovery. Anyway, it's growing. That's good stuff. Right, so that's that one done. Those are the plants. I'm sure there were six. There's only five up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make a Rancavola Lindleyi. Primulinum, Carvianum, and fl oh, Flavescans I put back, didn't I? Because it was a big one. <laughs> so I put it out of the way. Oh no, this is up there. One, two, three, four, five. There's only five up here. What have I done wrong here? Am I being really dim? So that's those two. Oh, it's Lindley I put back. Because it just goes on that little shelf there. It was easier to put it back and get it out of the way. I'm going round the twist. Slowly but surely, I'm going mad. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm already mad. <laughs> Maybe. Um, anyway, so that's how these work. We have a look at, you know, uh, when they were dealt with, whatever was done. In the main, it's going to be repotting. Because certainly this year, a lot of stuff has had to come off of mounts because they're just failing it on the mounts. This place doesn't work well for mounts. The other place was brilliant. I had them hanging all over the place. I had racks on the walls. I had stuff hanging from the roof. Mounts were good there. Round here, not so much. They're just not doing as well. And there's still more to come off of mounts before they fail miserably. So that's how these work. Um, when we get towards the end of September, we will do, we will look at the orchids that I worked on in June. And we'll see how that goes. Um, there might not be enough to do a part one and two. It might be just one video, but we will see when we get there. Now I'm going to shut the camera off and be a bit naughty. I'm just going to quickly show you something in the garden because obviously this was videoed but the video is for the gardening channel and the gardening channel hasn't got up to date yet with the, you know, the continuing story. So this video is just sat there on hold collecting dust until we get there. But you can have a sneak preview. So those of you who keep your eye on the garden and know it quite well will see that the bamboo from the maple off to the left is a lot thinner than it used to be and the massive new growth that was sticking up are gone. There is still some new growth sticking up but it's thin stuff. What's left to do on here will be done with the hedge trimmer rather than the hard work that had to be done to get this where it is now. Yeah. There's the hard work. That was all done by yanking the canes over to the side and hacking them off with the mini chainsaw. So just a quick sneaky look at the last of the big jobs that's underway. This lot's, still, this lot's all got to be cleared up before my house inspection and I'm hoping to get the rest of the bamboo clump finished by then as well. So there you go, you're not supposed to see this, you're supposed to wait until it gets onto the gardening channel. But there you go, work is being done. <laughs>